Anxiety and stress are high right now. Has this affected you? Let's talk about anxiety and stress and some real things that you can do that might help. I'm Katherine Nelson, owner of Del Sol Community Wellness. Thanks for joining me. So this week, um, as patients have been coming in for their appointments, the, the stress and anxiety is just really, really high. Emotions are running high. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty and um, people are, even people who don't normally deal with anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis, um, they're feeling it too. There's been just a lot of questions and a lot of concerns. And I, um, just in, in being with patients all week, I was thinking um, they're probably not the only ones. So let's just talk about a few things that um, might help, okay? Um, from the conversations I've had with people this week and, and just from what I've seen and what I've been able to take away, it seems to me that the bulk of the stress and anxiety is really stemming from two main things. One, people are feeling like everything that's happening right now is out of their control, and two, they don't know what to do. So, to the first, it does feel like the whole world is out of control right now. It feels like everyone has lost their minds and that um, it, it's all just coming down around us. It, it does feel that way. Um, the truth is though, when you look at this situation, you're not a victim here. None of us are victims in this. We actually have more that is in our control than is outside of our control. And the reason I think that that isn't necessarily felt right now is because my the second thing is people feel like they don't know what to do. They, there's no plan, there's no directive, they don't have a clear path to fall back on and it feels very chaotic like we have to make it up as we go. So here's a couple of things that might help with taking back some control and 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 um, having some clear things that you could do that will help with the anxiety itself, but then help with those underlying causes of the anxiety, feeling like everything's out of control. Okay. The first thing is that um, you need information. That, that That's the very first thing. I remember a couple of weeks ago asking my mom, you know, what do you know about this virus? What are we going to do? This does sound kind of, I mean, this is bad. This is unlike anything we've ever seen before and and I remember feeling anxious and and just a little bit afraid of what are we going to do how's this going to impact patients how's this going to impact our community what are we going to do and um the in those moments I realized the the real key thing is I don't have enough information I am afraid because I don't know what's going on so I've taken the time since then to dig in. I've been reading about COVID-19. I've been reading about what the CDC is finding and what they're doing, the plans that the um, White House Task Force and, and our, our government leaders, I've been reading about what they're implementing, what they're finding, the data they're correlating, and it's shed a lot of light and, and um, uh, brought some reality to the situation. Um, and I, I feel a lot better about things. So I think the first thing to recognize is that if you're feeling afraid and if you're feeling really high levels of anxiety right now, it's because you don't have enough information. So that would be the first thing. Go about getting some real information and that leads me to the second thing. You need to be careful about your sources of information. I know that, um, I know that it's easy to turn on the news or open a newspaper, but the reality is we all know, none of us are so naive that we believe that those stories are rep reported completely factually and without bias. None of us are that naive, we all know that. So with that being true, we need to be a little bit more discerning about the sources of our information. Go directly to the CDC, go directly to the WHO, go directly to the NIH, go directly to state and local outlets that are updating real-time information. 
you can stay in the loop and stay up to date on things without getting your information from network news and newspapers. That's important. This, the next thing, and I say this part, the, the next one I say because this is what my patients have reported to me as being particularly helpful. The overwhelming majority of them have said that they've disconnected from social media or set very low limits on exposure to social media and that alone has helped immensely. I know it feels like we would be cutting ourselves off, we're already supposed to stay home and not go anywhere and not do anything and when are we gonna be in contact with anybody? I know it feels that way, but when you're on social media, you're just bombarded with a lot of the um, hysteria and the frenzy that's happening right now and what people have told me this week is that as soon as they disconnected, they felt a lot better. So those would be the first three things. The next thing I'll tell you um, is make a plan. Sit down with your spouse, sit down with your family members, your neighbors, your community, whoever's gonna be involved, whoever you need to be involved, sit down with them and actually lay out a plan. What are we gonna do if mom can't go to work? if dad can't go to work. Heaven forbid if somebody loses a job, if somebody's fur furloughed, if somebody, if their work is shut down and everybody's sent home, what are we gonna do, actually do? What is our plan gonna be in those cases? Spring break for most kids, schools has been extended. So if they can't go back after that, what are we gonna do? What, not in theory, but what is our real plan gonna be? What are our options and how do we begin to execute those? Just having a plan written down, discussed where everybody's on board and we know plan A, plan B, plan C, we know that now as a family, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna feel so much better. You're, you'll be able to sleep better, you won't be worrying so much because you'll know exactly what you're gonna do if those things come down the pike, okay? The next thing, um, my FPU class, my former FPU students, um, other Dave Ramsey fans, people have just been talking a lot about the money piece. And here's, we are in the midst of a storm, okay? Always, always, always when you're in the midst of a storm and you have unknowns on the horizon, you push pause on your baby steps, your financial plan. You just put push pause, pay minimum payments on everything and start saving as much as you can. Um, with that, one caveat I would say, while it might be wise to stock up on a few items right now, everything that you buy and store is money sitting on your shelf that you can't spend on anything else. So think about that when you're stockpiling Whatever it is you're stockpiling, toilet paper, water, hand sanitizer, whatever it is, you may need some of those things and you may want to have some extra on hand, but any, any really huge amounts of that that you buy, that money is now stuck there. You can't use that for anything else later if, if you need to. So that's that opportunity cost that we talk about in FPU. Um, so that's something to think about. Okay, so this is um, this is what I've been doing. I pushed pause a couple of weeks ago. I've been just saving as much as I can, reducing spending and saving money. It gives you a cushion, it gives you options, it makes you feel a little less uncertain about what's coming. You, I think that you will also feel that. Um, it's a wise thing to do right now. Okay. Um, Treatment wise, there are quite a few things that patients have been finding success with that I wanted to also just mention. Cranial sacral therapy is one. With cranial sacral therapy, we see a lot of really positive results for stress and anxiety. It is part, a, part of a, a treatment plan for someone who is battling regular levels of anxiety or high levels of, of ongoing stress. Um, this week, I've been doing a lot more cranial than usual and people are seeing positive results. So that is an option if you're feeling like you need a reset, if you need a little bit of balancing, a little bit of grounding, if you're not feeling like 
um, if you're feeling like your emotions are out of control or running high or if you're feeling like you're not able to think as clearly as you were or your memory is being affected, your sleep is being affected, cranial sacral will have a good effect for you. And we're here, our operations, we're not suspending operations at this time. We're not suspending classes, we will be here. So if you need something, please get in touch with us because we will be here to help you. The other thing that people are finding very effective is acupuncture. With acupuncture, we can work on not only stress and sleep and emotions, but also boosting immune system. So we can do really powerhouse treatments with acupuncture and then you add in cranial sacral and, and people are seeing really good results. So that's also option for you. The other thing that um, I have seen people have good effects from this week is essential oils. You can say what you like about essential oils. This is for those who um, are believers, they know the power of essential oils. I am seeing really, really positive results with cedar wood. I think fur would also be another really good choice if you have a fur. Lavender, of course, is a staple. Roman chamomile, that would be a good one. Um, doTERRA's balance blend, also good. Um, cedar wood seems to be where people are really drawn this week and with fur being a second option. So if you have either of those at home, get them out, use them topically, diffuse them, and do that regularly throughout the day just to help that underlying turmoil that just is inside and it's feeling like it's all gonna come bubbling out. That, that feeling that just unsettled, busy, really dis, that unsettling feeling in your belly. Um, I think you'll find some good results from using cedar wood in particular is really where people are drawn. Fur would be good. And as I said, lavender, Roman chamomile, um, or doTERRA's balance. And as a quick side note, um, you guys know that uh, I only recommend doTERRA oils. So if you have a way of getting those, um, get them. If you need help, give me a call. Okay, so I hope that those are some really practical things that you can do to take back control because um, or to, to realize that you've, you've never lost control. You are not a victim in all of this. You will get through this. You and your family, you will get through this. This is going to be a short-lived. Um, it, it feels like the end of the world right now because it's been so widespread. It's affected so many things, but it will be short-lived. I don't know if that's weeks or months, but we'll get through this. It'll be over and you will be just fine. So take back control, make a plan, start getting some good, reliable information, make a plan with your family, um, disconnect a little bit from social media and the other things that are bombarding you. Um, if you need support, we're here to support you. We have cranial sacral therapy, we have um, acupuncture, yoga, our yoga classes are ongoing. Um, we're, we're here to support you through this. So if you need something, get in touch with us. You can call our office, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, and you can email me. My email is katherine at delsolcommunitywellness.com. It's Catherine with a C. I read all of those emails, I respond to all of those emails. I'll help you um, however I can. We will get through this. You will get through this. You are, you are a victor in this situation, okay? Take back your power, make a plan, bring your family together. You are a victor, you've got it. If this video was helpful to you and you know someone who also might benefit, you can tag them, you can share it. Let's get through this together. It's gonna to take all of us keeping a level head and um, making a plan for our families. So feel free to share. Tag somebody who could benefit and get in touch with us if we can do anything for you. God bless you all.